The bare paw quilt block is a traditional block with a lot of different variations. Today, I'm gonna to show you this fun variation of a bare paw, which has four little bare paws set around a center square. Welcome to Eva to Studio. My name is Elizabeth, and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So bare paw is this little block with a square and little half square triangles going off it. Sometimes there's two, sometimes there's three, sometimes they're in combination with other bear paws within a block. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this bear paw block that finishes at 12 inches, and it's made up of a center square with four bear paws going out from it into the corners. So to make the bear paw block, you are going to need four rectangles that are three and a half inches by five inches, four squares that are two inches square, and then from color one, you're gonna need two three and a half inch squares. And from color two, you're gonna need three three and a half inch squares. And then besides that, you are going to need um, eight of each color, two inch half square triangle units. So if you want to make these using the most popular method, which I recommend, then you're gonna need four two and a half inch squares of background fabric, and then two of each color, two and a half inch squares of background fabric. But you can make these half square triangle units in whatever is your favorite method. So you'll just have to cut the fabric requirements you need based on the method that you're using. But these are gonna be two inches square and they're gonna finish at one and a half inches square. So use that to do your calculations. So once we have these pieces, then we're gonna assemble the small bear paws. So this block has four little bear paws and each one of them finishes at four and a half inches. So for each bear paw, we are going to need um, one of the three and a half inch squares and four of the half square triangle units and one of the background squares. We're gonna assemble them like this. We will join the half square triangle units into pairs and then it becomes a little four patch unit. So when you've joined your half square triangles together, it's gonna to look like this. Now, sometimes people panic when they see this because they think that the ends of the points are cut off and that the point should go all the way up to the edge of the fabric. But this is how it's supposed to look. There should be a quarter inch gap between the tip of the triangle and the edge of the fabric because that is going to be the seam when it's joined. So if you don't have that gap, then you probably wanna check your measurements. But if it looks like this, don't panic. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. And then we'll double check the layout and we can tell that the layout is correct if we have a right angle corner in here. So if this one of these was um, flipped around the other way, like if it was like this, then we would see it's not a right angle corner, that's a straight line. So we wanna make sure we have the right angle corner. So we are gonna stitch this half square triangle pair onto this square and this half square triangle square onto this square. So once these pieces have been joined, this piece, you wanna press your seam toward the big square. And on this piece, you wanna press your seam out toward the background fabric. And we do this even if the background fabric is lighter, as in this case, because then when we go to join them together, those seams line up really nicely. We can feel with our fingers how those seams butt up against each other and it helps them to stay aligned. And it also reduces some of the bulk. In this situation, if we are pressing our seam this way, there would be a lot of layers in this part. So pressing it away from the triangles helps to reduce bulk in the seam. So we'll just stitch this last piece and then our little bear paws are done. So when your little bear paw is done, just take a quick minute and measure. This should be five inches square at this point. So if it's significantly off from that, you'll want to figure out what's wrong and fix up because that will help everything else in the block go together nicely. 
So you're going to have two bare paws of one color and then two bare paws of your other color. So four in total. And then we're going to lay them out with the um, bare paws the same color in opposite corners. And then in the middle, we're going to put the three and a half inch square of whichever color you did another three and a half inch square. And then these rectangles will just go at north, south, east and west to fill it out. So that is what it's going to look like. So we'll see this is now kind of like a nine patch block. There's three across and three down. So we'll join it just like a nine patch. We'll join these into rows and then join the rows together. In the pressing, I'm going to recommend that you press these away from the bear paw blocks, which would mean it's going underneath the background again, which is light, but that will just eliminate the bulk in pressing that seam. And that means this one, we will also press away from this underneath the background colors. So that's a little bit different than press to the dark side, but in this situation, it will help eliminate bulk and still help the rows go together. So there it is, we've joined all the pieces together. We have a block that is 12 and a half inches square. So it will finish at 12 inches and it has four little bear paw blocks in it. You can see a full tutorial of this with pictures if you click on the link below, as well as more quilting tutorials and inspiration at ebitastudio.com.